Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Coughlin and all the members of MassBio for inviting me to speak before you this morning. It is truly an honor. Before I begin, I would like to take a moment to recognize and thank Dr. Carnes and my entire CF care team at Maine Medical Center for all they've done to keep me as healthy as possible since my diagnosis. And to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for the constant message of hope that they have provided to people like me since 1955. You are my heroes. I would also like to thank my little brother Chase Marshall for being relentlessly supportive and caring as well as a source of regular comic relief. You are the best. And my mom, Martha Marshall, for fully embodying what it means to be a mother to a child with a serious medical condition and for teaching me to not let it define me. You are my chief caregiver, advocate, trainer, cheerleader, and best friend. I love you. <clears throat> and last but not least, I want to thank my dad for following the three pieces of advice that Boomer Esiason gave him a few days after my diagnosis, which was to learn all you can about CF science, to rally everyone to raise money for the CF Foundation, and to use your experience to make a difference professionally. This advice he really must have taken to heart when he quit his job and recruited Rob Patton to start Stratacuity. Dad, I would say after 15 years and helping so many companies advance their science that you've definitely made a difference in my life and many others. Thank you, Dad. I love you so much. <clears throat> it is an honor to be standing in front of so many individuals whose work improves the lives of patients all over the world. I am proof that your efforts and investments in science change lives as I have been the lucky recipient of scientific research that is transforming my health, quality of life, and long-term outlook on life. As you saw from the video, my parents tell the story of the day I was diagnosed as a snowy February afternoon in 2000, when after eight months of unexplained symptoms, my new pediatrician ordered a test for cystic fibrosis, a disease my parents knew nothing about. Nothing about, sorry, I lost my spot. <laughs> um, you see, in June of 1999, my family and I were living in Andover, Massachusetts, but born in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, when CF newborn screening was not mandatory. Thankfully today, newborn CF screening is mandatory in all 50 states. But I know my parents really wish they could have had me diagnosed sooner. When my test came back positive for CF, tears were shed, but my parents were relieved they had an answer and became determined to learn as much as they could about CF. They quickly became involved in the CF Foundation fundraising and pledging together to raise a daughter, not a disease. As a child, I found CF time consuming but tolerable. I woke up at 6 a.m., filled my breathing treatments, and was able to strap myself into my physical therapy vest to begin my treatments, often with my little brother by my side. I would repeat this process again before bed. This routine was, and still is, my normal. My childhood was filled with soccer practices and camps, always looking forward to my next practice and hoping to make the highest level team. I had yet to express any emotions of feeling any different from my friends because of my routine or because of the 30 pills I swallowed every day. It was all I knew. My friends asked questions, but they did not treat me any different. Recently, I found an old letter to Santa I asked him to take away CF because it was annoying and boring. It was not until I turned 12 that I started to experience the true power CF could have over my life. 
I was admitted into the hospital due to low lung function. I was scared, confused, and in pain. For the first time, I had a pick line in my arm. These first few days, my friends visited the hospital and brought me bags filled with distractions. During this time, some friendship, friendship strengthened while others went away. Having visitors made me feel better temporarily. As my stay lingered, I found myself crying more. I would leave my door open so I could watch the other kids pass in the hallway with their IV poles and wondered why we were all there. Having cystic fibrosis was beginning to take on a new meaning. I prayed for strength, not only for myself, but for all the faces I saw in the halls. I realize now that it was during this time that I began to draw strength from these CF setbacks. Looking back, I realize this is one of CF's gifts that will serve me well in my future. During my freshman year soccer season, in the middle of a game, I was overcome with a cough and congestion. After sitting out for the remainder of the game, I headed home, knowing I was bound for another admission in pick line. I felt defeated. <clears throat> Having success in athletics and pushing myself physically has always come naturally. I was beyond frustrated to be sidelined during this time. When I finally returned to school for my hospital stay, I learned to be confident wearing my pick line in the halls of my new high school and comfortable answering questions about what was sticking out of my arm. I learned to infuse myself without the assistance of my mom. I endured four more hospital stays in the sinus surgery. I felt frustrated with my body and anxious about getting sick and missing school. My parents kept my spirits high by sharing news about promising new drugs to help with my CF symptoms. I really began to think that if a new drug or therapy did not become available soon, my health would continue to slip. My lung function continued on a downward trend. CF chipped away at me and I continued to make adjustments. More antibiotics, more time in the hospital, less time for the things and the people I love. During this time, the CF community lifted me up. I was honored to be chosen as Sports Illustrated's December High School Athlete of the Month. It felt great to be the first female award winner and not an only person battling rare disease. This recognition allowed me to find new energy to help those struggling with the crippling effects of CF. I was able to meet new friends within the CF community who feel as passionate as I do about finding new treatments and a cure for this disease. On May 12, 2015, I was the first speaker to testify before the FDA on behalf of a new drug called Orcambi, a drug that could stabilize and increase my lung function and decrease my time in between hospital stays. I was raw and honest in my speech, knowing if this drug was not approved, then my life as a young adult could take a negative turn. I could suffer physically, emotionally, and economically from dealing with the advanced CF symptoms. Once my speech was over, I stayed and listened to 18 more CF patients and caregivers tell their story. Listening to the mothers, fathers, and young adults with CF speak with was incredibly powerful. These adults were facing the end of their lives, knowing they would not be able to watch their children grow or be there for their spouse. There was one young man that knew he was too ill to ever have a family of his own. I will never forget the determination in his voice. Later that day, we headed back to Maine and waited patiently. On July 2nd, as I sat in the DMV to take the test for my license, my mom's cell phone rang with the news that Orcambi had been approved. We hugged and cried while the people waiting in the DMV wondered if they would be that happy when they passed their license test too. <laughs> On 
On July 18th, I took my first dose of Orcambi, and we celebrated quietly as a family. We were quiet in our celebration, as of our family friend Sam, who was diagnosed with CF just weeks before me by the same pediatrician, is not a candidate for my miracle drug simply because of his genotype. This means that Sam, his family and supporters, need to wait and pray for a drug like Orcambi to help stabilize his declining health. Something easier said than done. I have learned that CF families share a very special bond. And until there is treatment for all patients with CF, regardless of their genotype, there will not be much of a celebration. It is my hope that advancements for the entire CF community will come quickly. Time is our biggest enemy. I am very happy to report that since taking Orcambi, my health seems to have stabilized. In fact, at my February clinic appointment, my FEV1 increased by 11%. My highest ever without the help of antibiotics or prednisone. I feel stronger and faster. I did not miss a single soccer practice or game all fall, and I hope not to miss any for lacrosse either. Thank you, Vertex. Thank you, CF Foundation. As I look ahead, I am very excited for my future and grateful to all those who continue to help me along the way. Not long ago, I thought I would only be able to consider colleges close to home, but my health stabilizing, even improving, and the fact that I like warm weather, I have been able to get, convince my parents to let me tour and apply to colleges in North Carolina. As long as there is an outstanding adult CF care center nearby, it is a good thing there are three great ones down there. For all the difficulty CF has brought me, it has made me who I am and has helped me overcome challenges both on and off the field. CF is a daily battle, and those of us who fight it are brave, resourceful, wise beyond our years, and most importantly, hopeful. Hope has been delivered to part of the CF community because of the investment in science, and we are so close to finally being able to manage one of the worst diseases mankind has ever seen. I look forward to the day when everyone can say, my CF is under control, or better yet, I used to have cystic fibrosis. On behalf of the entire CF community, thank you for allowing me to share my story. Amazing. I guess it's safe to say that's why we do what we do, right folks? Isn't that beautiful? Thank you so much, Kate, and thank you to your entire family for sharing. I get emotional. What's it about get, becoming middle-aged and becoming emotional? <laughs> Why does that happen? <laughs> I apologize, but thank you. That was beautiful.